If white immigrants can come to this country 50 years ago with nickels and dimes and no education and come here and pool their little nickels and dimes and no education into, with, and set up little stores, develop these stores into larger stores, develop this into an industry which creates job opportunities for whites. Since Lincoln was supposed to have freed the black man 100 years ago, and today the black man, according to the government economist, has spending power of $20 billion per year. We feel that with the black man spending $20 billion a year, not setting up any businesses, not creating any industry, not creating any job opportunities for his own kind, he's not in a moral position to point the finger today at the white man and tell the white man that he's discriminating against him for not giving him a job in factories that he, has, he himself set up. If the black man has $20 billion, and these so-called Negro leaders are such geniuses that they can integrate white restaurants and integrate white factories and integrate, force themselves into that which the white man has set up, they should use this same ingenuity to show the black people how to pool our wealth and set up something of our own. And then we won't have to force our way into his anymore. One more thing I would like to point out concerning what he said about 125th Street. We don't waste our time on 125th Street, but you can reach more people in the street who want to change than you can in the bourgeoisie society, the bourgeoisie church, and the bourgeoisie circles. We, our program is directed toward the man in the street. So we spend our time in the street, and what we do with that man, instead of trying to change the white man in your mind and make, make you accept us, we change the mind of the black man and make him accept himself. And as soon as he accepts himself, He'll solve his own problem. He won't be trying to force himself into your factory and into your bedroom and into your kitchen. Whites who act friendly toward Negroes. A fox acts, acts friendly toward the lamb. And usually the fox is the one who ends up with the lamb chop on his plate. The wolf doesn't act friendly. And therefore the wolf has more difficulty in getting the lamb chopped in his plate. I'd like to point out, though, that... I, I, I say that because it is usually the... If you study the structure of the Negro community, economically, politically, civically, psychologically, and otherwise, it's controlled by the white liberal, mm -hmm. who usually poses as the friend of the Negro, who actually differs from the white conservative in, in the same way that the fox differs from the wolf. Uh, their appetite is the same. Their motives are the same. It's only their mannerisms and, and methods that differ. Today, you could point to a large number of, of Negro leaders who have consistently betrayed Negroes in a whole host of areas. They aren't really Negro leaders. These are puppets that have been put in front of the Negro community by white liberals. These are parrots that have been put in front of the Negro community by white liberals. You can't name me a Negro leader who has been, a Negro leader who has been, betray, who has betrayed Negroes, who is not, who has not been endorsed sanctioned, uh, subsidized, and supported by the white liberals.